HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest playoff highlights from Hiller Girls Basketball. Matt Clark will fill you in with upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. And HCAM News recently caught up with Representative Carolyn Dykema and Senator Karen Spilka. But first, some happenings in town you should know about. Hopkinton native Kayla Lukowitz is running the Boston Marathon for the Brigham and Women's Hospital Stepping Strong Center. She hosted a night featuring beer tastings and raffle prizes at Startline Brewing to raise money towards her fundraising goals. Sure, so I'm running the Boston Marathon for Brigham and Women's Hospital, um, their Stepping Strong Center, which is their center for trauma innovation. So this is a great event here at Startline Brewing. Uh, we've got a ton of raffle baskets, um, a lot of people hanging out, having some good food and good beer, so it's all, all good stuff. All right, and why are you running the Boston Marathon? Um, so, really interested in running just because I grew up here in Hopkinton. You kind of have to run if you grew up here as a runner, and uh, I wanted my first and probably only, people keep telling me otherwise, but probably only marathon to be for a good cause, and so uh, an opportunity opened up at um, Brigham and Women's, and I just thought it was, it's such a great hospital, and they do such great work, it was an honor to run for them. Excellent, and uh, how's the training going, and uh, how long have you been training? Uh, training's going okay. Uh, I ran 10 miles this morning, and I'm still standing, so that's good. Uh, our longest run is in two weeks, and that's going to be 22 miles from Framingham to the finish. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes, but that's the furthest I've ever run in my life, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right, well, uh, we wish you the very best of luck. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you all for right. all that contributed. I know you have a lot of charities to support or ask often. It's really important to Kayla, her charity as well today, and to us. Thank you for making it a little bit special Yay! today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, so if you don't know, this is for Brigham and Women's Hospital, the Stepping Strong Center. So it's their Center for Trauma Innovation. It was founded after the Boston Marathon bombings to help with some of the terrible things that happen in our lives. And so it'll all go to really great research and cutting edge stuff. So thank you guys for going for the raffle tickets. What we'll do is I'll draw your name and you can choose your basket. Um, and if someone's not here, we'll kind of put them at the end and see what's left for them. So. Great event going on today to raise money for uh, Kayla and uh, running the Boston Marathon for the uh, Brigham Women's. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the uh, turnout and how the event went today? Uh, well, we're, we're real pleased with it. We This is uh, our second marathon season uh, since we've opened and we had a couple great fundraisers last year and we're hoping to do it again this year. Kayla's our first one this marathon season. Nice turnout. What we typically do is, uh, you know, just open up our, our space to a couple runners every year that are trying to raise some money for their respective charities. And it's part of how we give back as part of our brewery to the community. We are Startline Brewing after all here in Hopkinton. So uh, the marathon footprint is very really important to us and connecting with people that are running and their families and the communities and their charities is, is really what it's all about for us. So uh, we're real pleased with doing this and uh, I think our customers enjoy it as well. It gives a little excitement to their day when they come in and visit. Excellent. Can you talk about some of the festivities going on today? I understand some uh, taste testing going on. Sure. We, we, we're doing some, well, like, like we do all the time, we, we test new uh, beers. We had two new beers we launched for this holiday, or excuse me, this marathon season. Uh, we have a brand new Marathon Wheat Beer that we launched uh, about a week and a half ago, and also a Marathoner IPA, which actually recognizes another runner, uh, Wade Marshall, who's the president of the Hopkinton Running Club. Uh, all the proceeds from that particular beer are going to the 26.2 Foundation here in Hopkinton, and uh, 
We are uh, real pleased with our relationship. We're an official sponsor now of the 26.2 Foundation. So uh, it's great for us to have a little bit of merchandise and uh, some, some marathon specific products uh, that, are, that are both uh, geared towards runners but also the community and again some of those proceeds are going back to, to the town and, and to uh, the charity here locally with the 26.2 Foundation. Can you talk a little bit about how the uh, response has been to Startline Brewery open up in town? I understand that a lot of people like your beer. Well. We're very fortunate. Uh, the community support has blown us away. Uh, we've been open a little bit, a, a little over a year and a half now, and uh, every every day, every week, every month, we keep growing. We're in about 80 bars right now, uh, about 40 retail stores, adding a couple every every week, and uh, the business is growing. And that wouldn't happen without the community really supporting us wherever they see our beer. Uh, so we're really, really fortunate to have. Um, some great recipes, some awesome brewers that are committed to high quality beer um, and it's really resonating with, with our customers and the community. So, you know, part of it's just being hyper local and being really accessible to everybody here out in Hopkinton uh, and all of Metro West. Um, so, you know, it's craft beer is really popular right now. We're no exception with enjoying a nice, nice uh, bump in um, in our business because we're here at the right time in a great community and and making great beer. This past week, HCAM News caught up with Representative Carolyn Dykema and Senator Karen Spilka to discuss some of the latest happenings at the State House. Oh, well, one of the uh Things that I get a lot of questions about from Hopkinton residents is clean energy and what we're doing at the State House to really promote um, better, cleaner sources of energy. And there are a number of pieces of legislation now that are, I hope will move forward this session. Uh, I sit on the Committee on Telecommunications, Utilities and Energy, so we have the first cut at this legislation, if you will, and uh, a couple of pieces of legislation that would require more uh, state require utilities to purchase more renewable energy, which would be great and kind of drive more supply. Uh, and then there's another piece of legislation around rolling back a fee, which Eversource just uh, proposed that was approved by the state for residential solar. So any residential solar customers would be paying more for using the, the grid. And uh, I think that's really a step backwards for prom promoting renewable energy. So we're really fighting to, to roll that back. Transportation, uh, commuter rail is a big conversation. Uh, commuter rail is great for convenience, it's really important for commuters here in town, and it's also a great environmental initiative just to get people out of their cars and into public transit. But unfortunately, as those who take commuter rail uh, here in the Western Framingham line knows, it's, it, you know, reliability needs some work. We just need more investments. It's a very old system. We need more service, and we need more on-time service. And we've been working on that, uh, coordinating with the State Department of Transportation, which just commissioned a vision study, a statewide vision study, to really say what's the future of commuter rail, um, you know, and what are the upgrades that we need to make that would make this really a 21st, 22nd century system, like those in Europe, for example. So we are fighting as a Metro West legislative delegation to have legislative input on that. I think you know you really can't have an effective vision for commuter rail without having the voice of the consumer and the voice of the rider in that process. And I think uh, legislators are really a very effective way to do that. So we're we're going to be pushing to make sure that the needs of, of Hopkinton residents and all the residents along the Worcester Framingham line are met through this process. John came to me with a great story, that an interaction that he'd had with a, a police officer where, that was directing him to do one thing and he thought he was directing him to do another. And it led to a little uh, discomfort and a little interaction between he and the, and the police officer. And so he came to me with this idea that all officers directing traffic should be wearing white gloves, which would make their hands and their hand motions and signals much more obvious and visible to drivers. And we talked about it a little bit, and I encouraged Ron to go down and talk to Chief Lee about it. And after some conversation, I decided to file something. So we filed a bill that I call the White Gloves Bill. Ron and I, Ron is a co-sponsor of the bill with me. And what it says is that it would um, allow cities and towns to adopt a provision that would require white gloves for traffic direction. 
and Ron came into the State House about a year ago, I guess, and testified before the committee, did a great job. And as we always say at the State House, tell your story because it's those local stories that are always the most compelling ones. And he did a fantastic job. So we're hoping it didn't get reported favorably at a committee, but we're going to go back at it again next year and just keep the conversation going. I will say that after we filed it, that I've been getting a lot of comments from people thinking, you know, I never thought about that before, but he's absolutely right. We really should take another look at this. Massachusetts State Senator Karen Spilka recently talked with HCAM News. A recent bill for capital facility repairs and improvements in the Metro West recently passed. The $3.65 billion bond includes $2 million for improvements in Hopkinton's Town Hall. I asked Senator Spilka how the bond funds were allocated. The bond is a capital bond bill, so it's, it's to mostly help buildings. So there was one area for state-owned buildings, one for higher education, um, and you know whether it be community college, the state universities, or, or UMass. Um, there was one area for municipal buildings, knowing how much Hopkinton is working on in renovating its town hall, uh, I was able to insert the $2 million uh, authorization for Hopkinton town hall renovations. So working with the selectmen, the town manager, I will hopefully we will advocate and get that those funds released in the near future to help the residents out. A recent piece of legislation passed known as the Patch Act requires insurance carriers to issue common summary of payment forms directly to the patient. I asked Senator Spilka the purpose of the Patch Act. Patch Act, as it's, as it's called, Patch stands for Protecting Access to Confidential Health Care Information. And what it does simply is we all go to different providers, doctors, hospitals, and, and when you go, you usually get what's called an EOB, an explanation of benefits in the mail, and it tells you know what, what services you got. Often, insurance companies currently send that explanation of benefits to the subscriber, the person whose insurance is, is, is at, named under, not the patient. And in working with the Connor Center for Women based out of Brigham and Women's, I discovered that many victims of domestic violence say, don't go to seek health care because they're afraid that their explanation of benefits, which would explain what they were see health care they were seeking, they don't seek it because they're afraid that would get back to the person who was actually causing them harm. So to have it then go directly to the patient and more general information. So instead of getting into detail, uh, it would just say office visit or something that the patient could then help uh, dictate how specific as well as that it would come directly to them. Healthcare has been a really big issue for me, so I've worked a lot on that and you know, reducing the cost of healthcare and other areas because it, it impacts all of our lives. So it's just essentially to protect confidentiality. Right, right, which you think would be under the federal HIPAA Act, but somehow this has slipped through and, and it's been going on for years. Coming up next on HCAM News, Hiller girls basketball and hockey continue on in the postseason. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider plus a whole lot more. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. This past week, Hopkinton Hillers hockey fell to Rockland in the South Division III sectional semifinals 4-3. The game went back and forth, but a late goal gave Rockland the win. The Hillers hockey team ends their incredible season with 19 wins, 3 losses, and 1 tie. Congratulations to this year's team and Coach McPherson on an incredible season. The Hopkinton Hillers girls basketball team is still very much alive in the postseason. This past week, they took on Medway in the sectional finals. Could they advance on to the states? Let's find out. 
On Saturday, March 10th, it was the Division II Central Sectional Finals. The Hopkinton Hillers girls met up with the Medway Mustangs at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. In the first quarter, Medway outscored Hopkinton 14-10. Olivia Gladeau knocked down a three right at the end of the first quarter to give the Hillers some momentum. Takes a step in, running out of time on the shot clock. Haveny for three, got it! From the left corner, Regan Caveney buries it. The second quarter was a defensive battle. Hopkinton outscored Medway 9-5, and it was 19-19 heading into halftime. The Medway offense came alive in the third quarter. Riley Childs and Sam Murray knocked down three two-point field goals each to help Medway outscore Hopkinton 16-9. Medway led 35-28 heading into the fourth. The Hillers' defense shut down Medway in the fourth, and Regan Caveney was red hot, knocking down nine points in the quarter. The Hillers would outscore Medway 18-4 in the final frame and walk away with the 46-39 victory, punching a ticket to the state semifinals. Regan Caveney scored a team-high 15 points, while Ivy Goglin pitched in with 12 Marissa Prawl and Callie Corby each added seven. On Wednesday, March 14th at Worcester State University, Central sectional champion Hopkinton met up with West sectional champion Northampton. The first quarter was back and forth. Regan Caveney knocked down a pair of threes in the opening quarter to help Hopkinton to a 9-8 lead heading into the second. The second quarter was more solid defense by both teams. Caveney came up big once again for the Hillers, knocking down six of Hopkinton's eight points in the quarter. The Hillers outscored Northampton 8-6 in the quarter and led 17-14 at the halftime break. The Hillers had some good contributions from Ivy Goglin and Marissa Prawl in the third. Regan Caveney also added another four points to help the Hillers outscore Northampton 14-8 and lead 31-22 heading into the fourth. In the final eight minutes, Northampton got into some foul trouble and the Hillers took advantage, knocking down 11 free throws. Northampton outscored Hopkinton 18-17 in the final frame, but it would not be enough as the Hillers grabbed the 48-40 win and advanced to the state finals. Regan Caveney came up huge once again in this game. She totaled 24 points. Ivy Goglin contributed 14 points of her own. Ivy also scored her 1,000th career point in the game. The Hillers will battle South champion Foxborough in the state finals Saturday, March 17th, 11 a.m. at the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. This past week, the Hopkinton School Committee hosted a public forum for residents to meet three final candidates for the assistant superintendent position. Here's a look. The Hopkinton School Committee hosted interviews and a public forum with the three finalists for the assistant superintendent position. The three candidates included Jennifer Parson, who is the current principal of Lincoln Street Elementary School in Northborough. Hopkinton uh, have always valued and respected the work that's done here, including the obvious transition from Central School to Marathon School. Um, that was simply amazing. And I'm looking for kind of a different step in my career path at this time. I've been a school administrator um, or teacher in Massachusetts for about 25 years. And um, I'm looking for the next level and another way to reach a you know, broader group of students. Michael Cara, the current principal of the David Mindest Elementary School in Ashland. Not to mention the fact that it's a, a very, it's a very well-respected school district. That, you know, understands the importance of providing students a, a rigorous education, yet an education that is understanding of the holistic needs of all students. And um, I think that's really important 
to me and my value system. Um, and right now is a, a, a big opportunity for me to, to take this step. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but on Friday, in two days, I'm defending for my doctorate at Boston oh, College. Wow. So it is, it is a big <laughs> it, is, it is a big week. Um, so when you talk about timing, this is, it's just a great time in my life right now to try and take what I've learned over the course of 18 years in education, along with the past three years at Boston College, and now that I'm going to have the, the doctorate degree, uh, I feel comfortable making that move. I, I'm certainly nervous about leaving children behind more so than, than you do in any other position, uh, but I want to challenge myself, and I feel like I'm ready to do that. I'm ready for that next step. Dr. Michael Hanna, the current learning leader of Stratton Elementary School in Arlington. Um, I think uh, why Hopkinton and why now is because, I guess, in a word, um, alignment and vision. Uh, the vision that animated your strategic plan development process, um, where you actually had a prompt about uh, to people about like how has the world changed and, and how are the schools responding to that change. I just thought it was so impressive, and then, and then that you created it so deliberately and thoughtfully. And that process and that way of working is really closely in line with how I've led in schools and in communities. Um, and then another sense of alignment is the imperative in the plan to have alignment among all of the schools around all of the different strategic initiatives. On Friday, March 16th, the school committee announced they have chosen Jennifer Parson as the next assistant superintendent of Hopkinton Public Schools. So I think some of it really has, some of our job as educators, and I don't know if we're always as good at it as, as we should be, or if I'm even explaining it clearly enough to you, um, but our job is really to take the information that we have about children and make sure we're leading them um, and pushing them forward in their, any of their areas of deficit. Um, and then, in some cases, we do have kids that really need to be pushed forward. All the data shows us, yep, you know, they've really mastered all of this and all their pretests are showing that they've already mastered the curriculum. That's when I might see, if I were to be sitting in the role of the assistant superintendent, a teacher might come to me and say, I'm, I'm stuck. I, I really need some additional resources to help the student, whether they're at the middle or high school level um, or at the elementary level, I need some help coming up with opportunities for the student to really stretch their knowledge and their learning. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, March 16th at 5 p.m., international literary performer and musician Reggie Gibson performs his unique style of multi-genre music on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. It's, um, it's taught me a lot. And, and uh, one of those things is, is, is how to try to move through the world uh, and, and somehow better it, um, if one can. So I guess what I want to say is also in this place of lay hood, we have many churches and other places, and what we say is when someone uh, can sing, we don't say they can sing. If they have something that gets inside of your DNA and somehow begins to separate the molecules, we say they can sing. And at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with Boston Marathon race director Rave McGillivray on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. What, is it, what does it take to be the race director? Let's just say of the Boston yeah. Marathon. What is that job and what do you do? Well, it's very different today than it was when I started 30 years ago. 30 years ago, there was only a handful of us. So a lot of it was hands on deck where the rubber hits the road, you know, getting out there, moving the road cones and putting the barricades out. Because <laughs> there wasn't much more to it yes. then. Now uh -huh. the whole thing has changed mm -hmm. so, so much, and especially since the field size went from when I started around 7,000 runners, now we're at 30,000 yes. runners. On Sunday, March 18th at 2 p.m., the interview for Hopkinton's new assistant superintendent Jennifer Parsons will air. On Monday, March 19th at 7.30 p.m., Dr. Kathy McLeod talks with Hopkinton Public Schools resource officer Phil Powers about the importance of safety in the schools on a new episode of Highlights from the Hill. So what else do you come across in like your day-to-day? Your -day? I know Kathy talked a lot about how you know, kids come to you, they talk to you, you kind of have a relationship with them. What, kind of, what else do you do as your wandering around the schools. One of my big problems at the high school other than this is parking. Oh, that's parking. true. So 
Mm-hmm. You know, kids pay a lot of money for a parking lot. They, yeah. I mean, they, they don't have a signed spot, but they get a signed lot. And um, they pay a lot of money for that. And uh, other kids without the passes just go in there. And every car has a sticker on it, so yeah. I have to go out there. And, you know, because I wait till the kids come to me and complain that there's no parking, and then I'll go out. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's a problem. And, And at 8 p.m., Mary Arnott talks with Massachusetts State Representative Carolyn Dykema on a brand new episode of All About Hopkinton. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're working on in those areas or what's happening? Hmm. So water is something that I was exposed to. I mentioned I served on some local boards in Holliston before I took this job, and it seemed like every time I turned around, I was on the planning board, I served on a sewer committee, and water issues kept coming up over and over again. And when I started running for office, I was told that water wasn't really getting much attention at the state house, And I couldn't believe it. You know, if, if Beacon Hill were representing the interests of local communities, water should be a significant part of the conversation. On Tuesday, March 13th at 6.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen joint meeting with the school committee will air live on HKM TV. On Wednesday, March 21st at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HKM TV. Tune in and join the conversation. And on HKM Ed, the Hillers Girls Basketball Semifinals versus Northampton game will air. If you want to know more about all of HKM's shows before they air, then head over to hkm.tv slash connect where you can sign up for our HKM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HKM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hkm.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.